Hello, everyone. Again, thanks for joining either in live or watching the recording. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, this is our workshop on uh, PolyVenture, which is like my fun workshop because we get to talk about games, uh, but particularly how different concepts of political science can apply to the games that we uh, are familiar with and we play. So uh, just a brief overview. Uh, note that this workshop's every Wednesday from 8 to 8.30. And recordings will be accessible on this slide. So you just click on the link and it'll take you to uh, Canvas and the recording. Now, this workshop is a new one that explores how games relate to concepts in the discipline. And so I'll be live streaming games like Risk Board Game and others to discuss how different elements of a game relate to the discipline. Now, if you have an idea for a game you want live stream or, and to talk about politics, uh, feel free to send me an email. I'm pretty open. So uh, just let me know. We can reserve one of these workshop times to talk about it and uh, see the relationship between concepts and ideas. So with that, uh, we'll jump to week two here. And our learning objectives um, for this workshop are to recall the four concepts of communication, information, strategy, and moves. And then secondly, is to apply at least one of these four concepts to a specific game or versions of a game. So recall that these concepts um, are the following. So communication, which there can be direct or indirect communication between uh, players. Uh, you have information which can be complete or incomplete. Uh, complete means you can see everything about the game. Incomplete means there's elements of the game that aren't available to you. Uh, third, you have strategy where you can have a cooperative effort. So the different players have to work together in order to accomplish the game's goal. Or you have a competitive type of game uh, where you have two or more players. Um, basically, one will win and the other one won't or they'll lose. And then lastly, you have moves. So you can either move simultaneously, which means at the same time, or you can move sequentially, which means one after the other. So in order to uh, bring this these concepts into real life, what we're going to do is uh, look at two versions of the same game of Risk. And so for our first game, we're going to watch a short video of uh, how to play the Risk board game, which is the classic, you know, it's on your, it's on your tabletop, kitchen top. You're playing with two to six uh, other people and getting a sense of how that works. And what I'd like you to do is keep in mind uh, these different concepts. Like what is the communication that would be available to players? What's the information level? Uh, what strategies would they have to employ? And then what, how do they take their moves or make their moves? So let me go ahead and open up this slide. And before I continue, I'll get a share link and I'll post it in the chat for those of you attending. So in case you wanna open up the um, slides on your own, you can do that. So let me get the link and I'll post it in the chat. So you have access to it. All right, let me go ahead and open the, the short video of how to play Risk uh, tabletop board game. Let's go ahead and watch this. Risk is a fun board game where players try to conquer continents and wipe out their opponent's armies. To set up the game, lay out the board, which features six continents divided into 42 countries. Then, each player chooses a color for their army. There are three unique units that make up an army and represent different numbers of troops. Each infantry piece counts as one troop. Each cavalry piece counts as five troops. And each artillery cannon represents ten troops. If you're playing with two players, each player starts with 40 troops. Subtract five troops from each player's starting army for each additional player. Once each player has received their starting troops, everyone rolls a die. The player with the highest roll gets to place one of their troops on the board first, on one of the unoccupied spaces. Then, players take turns clockwise, placing one troop at a time. Players can't place more than one troop in a space until every space on the board is occupied with at least one troop. Once everyone has placed all of their troops, shuffle the risk cards and place them in a pile on the side of the board. Then, each player rolls a die and the player that rolls the highest number goes first. On a player's turn, they count the number of occupied territories they control and divide that number by three. This is the number of troops the players can place on the board. They may place them in any space they occupy to make their army bigger. Once the troops are added, the active player can either pass, move, or choose a territory to attack. To move, the player moves any number of troops from one territory to an adjacent territory they already occupy. You can only move once a turn, 
and can do it before or after you attack. To attack, the player must declare which territory they're attacking and with which set of troops. You can only attack territories that border a space you occupy, and you can only use the army in the bordering space to attack. The attacking player can attack with two, three, or greater than four troops and can receive up to three attacking dice. The defending player can defend with any number of troops, but can only receive up to two defending dice. The attacking player rolls dice equal to the number of attacking troops, minus one. And the defending player rolls dice equal to the number of defending troops. Match the attacker's highest numbered die with the defender's highest numbered die. Repeat this process with the next highest set of die if the attacker is using two attacking die. Ignore the lowest die if the attacker is using three attacking die. If the defender uses two troops and the attacker only uses two troops, take the defender's highest number of the two. If the attacking player wins both rolls, remove two of the defender's troops. If the defender runs out of troops in a territory, the attacking player then moves into the territory. Then they can remove any remaining troops from the space they attacked from into that new territory. If the defending player wins a roll, or there's a tie, the attacking player removes one of their troops for each roll the defender wins, or for a tie. At the end of the turn, if an attacking player successfully occupies a new territory, they draw a card from the risk pile. If you get three risk cards with the same troop on it, three risk cards with one of each troop type, or two risk cards with a wild card, you can trade them in for additional armies. You get four troops for your first set and two additional troops for every subsequent set until you get six sets, at which point you get 15 troops. Play continues counterclockwise until one player remains and they successfully occupy the entire world. We just saw an overview of how to play the Risk board game. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that when you play this board game, everyone can see the board. Uh, so given that, uh, here's some questions that we would want to ask ourselves. Like, how do we classify this uh, the Risk board game on these four different uh, dimensions uh, with respect to communication, information, strategy, and moves? So based either on your knowledge of playing this board game in your past or present, or in watching this video, what would you think um, we would identify the type of communication? Is it direct between players or is it indirect between players? And feel free to unmute yourself or you can post in the chat. I think it's direct. Okay. And why do you think it's direct? Because they, when you attack or do something, you are telling them that I'm attacking you. Got it. All righty. Uh, when it comes to information, is it complete or incomplete? I, I think want it to is say complete. complete. All right, so I heard Christian say he thinks it's complete, and then Maureen, you were going to say? Complete, too. Complete. So, Maureen, yeah. why do you think it's complete? Because it tells you, like, everything with the moves, like, that you can make and I don't know it tells you everything like perfect how to play and everything great uh Christian did you want to add to that uh yeah I just uh, I agree as well because you can see everything that's going on so to me that would mean complete but I'm not sure <laughs> no that's good all right uh for strategy is this a cooperative game or a competitive game it could be both how so well, you have multiple players. Uh, let's say you have four players. Two of them might cooperate against the other two or one. and But at the end, you will uh, be attacking the other last one. So it becomes competitive for the winning game. I'll make a note here. If you have more than three players, you can have two players that team up. Or that yeah. cooperate against the other player. Okay. And at the end, when you have only two players left, then you are competing. 
Got it. So this can go from a cooperative competitive game to a and as a competitive game. Mm -hmm. Uh, Great. Uh, For moves, is this simultaneous or sequential? That's my sign that you can kind of see. (laughs) Yes, he brought donuts. Yeah, the donut shop didn't have any more. So is this risk board game, are they moving at the same time or are they moving one after the other after the other? One after another. Okay. So now we've we've looked at this game, watching you know five-minute video and having maybe some experience with it, and we classified it based on these four dimensions. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch or play the same board game, but in its online version. So this one's called Risk Global Domination. So what I'll do here is I will open the particular app that we need and I will open to play. Hopefully it shows up in this proper window. And if you can let me know if you can hear the sound again by thumbs up, that'd be helpful. Can you hear the sound or the music I was just saying? Okay, let me lower it just a little bit since Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a single player game with the computer. So I open the front page, I'll do a classic board game. So this is what you saw in the video prior, but obviously it's an electronic version. And I'm gonna say manual placement off. So it'll be done automatically. Um, we'll just make this an expert uh, computer. No blizzards, cause I don't even know what that is. Card bonus fixed. I'm gonna turn the fog of war on and then we'll make it balance blitz dice rolls. So we're gonna click play. Um, and I'll go ahead and add some more computer players. And now the game's being set up. So this is my guy, it's JF. <laughs> Apparently we're playing against Hercules Stoneface. And right now they're making their move. So they're placing their units on the board. In this case, we don't see the actual picture, but we see like the number. And now Hercules is uh, attacked from Greenland to, I think, northeastern North America. And now it's my turn. So I have three troops. I don't know. Where do you guys want me to place them? Australia, Asia, North America, or South America? And feel free to <laughs> unmute or to post in the chat. I say Africa. All right. I'll, I'll, well, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go to Western Europe since that's as close as Afro, Africa I'll get. I'll click here. All right. And then now where should I attack? How about Australia? All right. So from Australia, I'll go here into Western Australia from Indonesia. New Zealand. All right. I I should go to New Zealand. Okay. Let's do that first our new guinea okay so i took over there i'm going to take just as few troops as i can so it looks like three and then i'll go from new guinea to western australia and i was defeated sadly anywhere else i can go let's stick with uh, christian's suggestion See if we can take over part of this uh, North Africa. Okay, we did that successfully, which is awesome. And then where should I go? We'll take one last move. Brazil? All right, let's try Brazil. So then we'll call that. We'll finish our turn. And then we'll just go like that. And then we'll let the computers play to see how they kind of process their moves. And then we'll talk about it. So Millicent Armada apparently is going in the, in, on the Asian continent. And then Antonio Von <laughs> Boards, Broads. <laughs> Dropped a whole bunch of troops in South America and in Asia. And 
attack North South America and Asia. Oh, there's six players. Never mind. So Pearly the Fop. So they dropped folks in the South America and they attacked me. So now. And again, <laughs> attacked again in Western Europe. And then Little the Pious, which is the last computer player. So Hercules Stoneface is gonna go, and then we'll we'll stop the game, <laughs> and then we'll talk about it. Uh, and, and Christian told me to speed it up so I can do that. Okay, so I'll go in and uh, uh, let me see if I can. I'll sur I'm not gonna surrender yet, but I'm gonna try to lower the volume on the music here. So coming back to the presentation, right? So. How would you classify this game? 